Good morning, America. It's John here, and I've got a riddle for you kids today. What's two years old and eight years old and 450 years old? Go ahead. Study on it. Cipher on it. I'll wait. Oh, well, I'm kind of tired of waiting. I ain't got much confidence in you figuring this out. I'm gonna tell you, it's my fiddle. Today is my fiddle's birthday. There won't be a party, I don't think, no parades that I know of, but I would like to waste a little bit of your time and tell you a story about this fiddle. How do I know that it's its birthday? Well, it's birth certificates right there inside of it. Uh, February the 29th, 2016. Well, now it's 2024, I reckon. That's eight years. Eight-year-old fiddle, right? Wrong-o. Leap day. It was finished on leap day. Took longer than that to build. It's like a baby, you know. You gotta, you gotta carry them a while and work on them, and then they're born. It, this one was born. It was completed on um, 29th February, leap day. So that's how it's two years old and how it's eight years old. But uh, how is it 450 years old? You're going to have to stay with me. This gets tedious. And as it goes, it gets more tedious. Just stay with me if you, if you can. Keith Williams built this fiddle. Keith Williams lives up at Chucky, Tennessee, but he's from Union County, if you're taking notes. Keith is a fiddle player like you ain't never heard. I'm a fiddle player like you ain't never heard too, but he's good. He He's on the, the high end of the spectrum. Keith uh, also makes instruments, obviously, and a good guy, good preacher. Keith uh, got this, this top is made out of red spruce. Uh, they also call that Adirondack spruce. But if you're writing it out, red spruce is easier to spell, so I'd go with that. Keith got this wood from, uh, got this spruce from Gene Horner. Gene's 90-something year old, lives out on the plateau in uh, Rockwood. Been building fiddles all of his life. Gene got the wood from John Arnold, world-renowned guitar builder. John Arnold got this spruce from the Smoky Mountains. More specifically, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Now, some of you may be wondering how did he carry a log out of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park? That's against the law. If you try to carry a walnut out of there, they'll shoot you. You can't carry a rock out of the park. How did he get a log? Okay, stay with me. Picture it. 1995, Hurricane Opal. I told you, it just gets more bizarre. Hurricane Opal out there on the great Atlantic Ocean. Well, here she come in to the coast, east coast, and made a mess and made a mess until nothing would stop that hurricane except the Great Smoky Mountains. It came all the way into the mountains and it brought rain and a lot of it. It was in October, I believe, of 95. Over 12 inches of rain fell in less than a day. That's a foot, and it's a lot of centimeters, too, but it's a foot, I know. Foot of rain in less than 24 hours, and the winds. Winds like we don't see around here, and the winds came from a direction that we're not used to. Now, kids, when a storm comes in out of the east, it's a horse of a different color. That's a different ball game when they come out of the east. These winds came from a strange direction and all that water and it made a mess and it brought down trees in the Smokies and flash flooding. And the news cast uh, showed pictures of these trees across the road. And John Arnold and Ted Davis, who were probably the world's leading authorities on red spruce. 
for the purpose of instrument making. They saw that newscast and they began to wonder, how could we get to that tree? How do we get that log? Well, the way the law is written, you can't take anything out of the Smokies unless it falls on the road. If a tree falls on the road, it becomes property of the tree removal company. So they tracked down and they found those logs and they, they secured them for the purpose of guitar tops. And they knew what they were doing and they, they milled that lumber in a way to get the most tops they could possibly get without wasting so much as a splinter. And when they got to a point where they had, they had cut all the tops for guitars that they could, then they got to thinking, well, let's get some mandolins out of this little stuff. How, how many mandolin tops can we get? How many fiddle tops can we get? This is something special. We don't want to waste it. Why was it so special? You may be wondering, if you hadn't already turned this video off. Why is this so special? Red spruce still grows. It's not extinct. Why was this so special? Not because it was in the park. That, that wasn't really the special thing. The special thing was these trees were in a part of the Great Smoky Mountains that had never been logged. It was virgin timber. There's very little of that left on the earth. Why was it never logged? It was so high up, the elevation was so high that they couldn't get the timber out, so it never got logged. It was inaccessible until the park was built and 441 was built, nobody could even get there. So the trees were never cut until uh, they couldn't cut them, couldn't access it until the park was built. Well, once the park was built, you couldn't cut them. So these trees grew under the canopy of that old growth forest and they were starved for light in that. That's a different forest. That's not what we're used to around, you know, around the backyard here. They were starved for light, probably starved for water on top of that mountain. Uh, could have been growing in rock, probably was on top of the mountain. These trees were starved of the nutrients that they needed and they were suppressed. They grew, they got just enough to stay alive. And they stayed alive for centuries. The log that this top came out of, they counted the rings and they determined that in 1588, the tree was already 14 feet tall. So when they got done with their math, they determined that that tree was 450 years old when the hurricane brought it down in 1995. It's not the age that makes it so interesting and so sought after. It's the fact that it was slow growth. The grain in this wood, you, I know you can't see it through the camera, but the grain's so tied in places I can't see, I can't see between the lines. It's an odd, it's an odd figure in this uh, grain, tight. That makes for good instruments. When the wood, they call it, uh, they say that it's stiff, lightweight, but stiff, and that's what's sought after, and that's what you can't get now. Red spruce still grows, but it grows under modern conditions, and it grows faster because it's getting light and it's getting what it needs. You would think that a 450 year old tree would be the size of those big redwoods out in California. You think oh, that's a massive tree. This log was 28 inches in diameter from what I understand. That's nothing all that special. You may have one a lot bigger than that in your yard. 450 years and it just got 28 inches in diameter. So, What's special about it is there are tonal characteristics in this that you don't find in other things. They built a lot of instruments out of it. 
uh, all they could get and, and there's other old trees, but there won't be, you know, virgin timber is rare. And to find something that grew in these conditions, it makes for a special story. It makes for some special instruments. It's not worth a million dollars. It's uh, it's a one of a kind because any custom instrument is, but it's certainly not the only one built out of that tree. It's not that it's uh, just something that should be in a museum. It should be played, but it is special. Something else that makes it kind of special. Well, I'll tell you about the rest of it. The back, that's curly maple. And it came out of the mountains too, but on the North Carolina side, that's old people used to call it cattail maple. It's prettier than the top. And then the chin rest, Keith built it. It's, uh, he made it, it's, it's out of curly maple too, but it, it came out of, I believe the front yard over here in Taylor Valley in Union County where he's from. Something else kind of uh, special about this fiddle, on its birth certificate it says, Psalms 149.1, which says, I'm glad you asked, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. So, Happy birthday to the fiddle. And the uh, legend of the Smoky Mountain Spruce, you can read all about it on the internet. And uh, made some good fiddles, made some good guitars.